How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, we're about versus Gwen in the underused tier from the Discord server. Go ahead and join the Discord server. It's the best place to go for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battles right now. There's a link in the description down below. And for any reminders, drop a like on the video and subscribe. We're on our way to 20k by the end of the year, and I'd love for you to be a part of that journey. So looking at their team, I'd say we could probably lead off with Inteleon just fine. So I'm going to do that. Um, it looks like Skeledurge will have some fun as well if we get rid of that Lapras. Um, that Moltres is going to be tough to deal with, but I think Golem can probably take care of that with its uh, sturdy ability taking any hit from it, like Scorching Sands, stuff like that. So I think we're going to be all right. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Gwen. So they're going to lead off with Braviary. The Hisuian Braviary, of course. We lead off with James Pond, the um, Inteleon. So um, we're not in a bad position. We're not in a great position. We could Dark Pulse, but there's always the chance they Terror. And also, I'm not confident Dark Pulse will take this thing out, but I'm pretty confident a Psychic from them or an Esper Wing will take us out. So I'm going to go for a Flip Turn and get on out of there, like so. Get a bit of chip damage off on the Braviary. And then we'll just go back and pick something more suitable to deal with this thing. Because Hisuian Braviary does hit really hard on the special side. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my um, Bronzong because if they go for an Esper Wing and it boosts their speed, our Garibald is going to hit it just that much harder. So let's go into Bronzong. They do go for the Esper Wing, which is going to do nothing to our uh, Bronzong, of course, and boost their speed. So we're in a very good position. We can go straight for a Garibald if we want to. They more than likely switch out into the Moltres, but I, they could also try the look with Heat Wave. Um, so I'm going to go for a Garibald real quick. They do withdraw the Braviary, which is fine. I didn't want to mess around with no frets, you know. And they go Espeon. Oh, Espeon's probably not the best switch in here. They might be expecting a Stealth Rocks, to be fair, though, for the Magic Bounce. So we go for a Gyra Ball, nearly taking out the Espeon, which is fantastic. So if we assume that they don't have a Defogger, unless Brave Area has Defog, um, we can start setting up screens. So I'm going to go ahead and go for a screen. They go for a Trick. Oh, I should have expected this. I really should have expected the Trick. As they are going to get our, we're going to get some choice specs, and then they get light clay, which is really unfortunate. We get the light screen up though, which is going to benefit us at least for a little bit against the Moltres, Lapras, and Hisuian Samurott. Uh, not Samurott, Braviary, <laughs> and the Espeon. So, with Espeon on the field, what's our best Pokemon to go into? I probably say Cyclizar, because if they're going to go for a Shadow Ball now or a Switch, we should go Cyclizar. So. Rainmaker, come on back. Let's expect a Shadow Ball from this thing. Go into our normal type Ferrari. The Cyclizar, nice and shiny. Gotta love it. And then they go for a Thunder Wave. Of course they do. Of course they do. And they knew we had to switch there. So that's a really good play by my opponent for sure. Um, we know they probably have Psychic as a, as a Psychic Stab move. Um, what I'm going to do is, just because I want to get a knockoff off, I'm going to go for a knockoff. They do withdraw the Espeon, which is absolutely fine. Let's see what they go into to take a knockoff. They're going to go into Lapras. Lapras makes a lot of sense. It's nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. Um, we go for a knockoff, though. Hopefully, the load of dice will just ruin their plan. Leftovers. So, what kind of Lapras set are we dealing with? If we assume it's special, we should go into our Lem Bronzong. But I feel like they wouldn't go into it if it was. I feel like they might go for a Dragon Dance here. It's just a hunch. But I feel like it's Dragon Lance that's coming our way. Um, what I'm going to do is, because I'm pretty sure we still outspeed even though we're paralyzed, depending on the set. I'm going to go for a U-turn just in case they pull a double. There we go. U-turn comes through. We outspeed, obviously. And then we're going to go on back. So let's see what we can do against this Lapras. Um, I'm leaning towards the Bronzong. Leaning towards the Sylveon. And I'm also leaning towards the Skeledurge. But Skeledurge gets hit pretty hard by Surf. But I feel like they're going to go for an Ice-type move, you know? So what do we do? I think Inteleon is our best bet. So I'm going to go into Inteleon. Like so, James Pond coming through on a secret mission, 007 and all that stuff. They go for a Whirlpool. Are they a Whirlpool Perish Song Trapper? I hope not. Let's go for a Dark Pulse. We are choice specs, so this should still sting a little bit, even though it's a Lapras. As that does nothing, they go for a Life Do. How much health does Life Do recover again? It's like 25% or something, isn't it? Yeah, about 25%. So... Light screen wears off. Now we know they're going to go for a Whirlpool. We should go into something a bit more capable of taking this thing on. So I'm going to go into Golem. Our Golem should outspeed the Lapras. And even if it doesn't, it's fine. Because it looks like their only attacking move is going to be Whirlpool. They probably have Perish Song. So we go Golem. And we can threaten them out. Because Whirlpool is going to do about half to us. Like so. And then obviously we get trapped in the Vortex and all that stuff. Which is going to lower our HP even more. 
And what we have to do here is um, we go for a Stone Edge 100%. They may switch out into the Iron Fawns. But Golem, looking at it, Golem actually puts so much work in against that team. Let's go for a Stone Edge first and foremost because they probably withdraw as they do. And they're going to switch out into what exactly? Espeon. So Espeon comes through, which is a good play. And um, let's see if it can miss the Stone Edge. We don't miss, which is nice. So Golem gets a KO, which is great. We get the Espeon out of the way, which is amazing. And now they've got Salamence, they've got Moltres, Lapras, Hisui, and Braviary all weak to uh, Rock. And they've got Iron Fawns weak to Earthquake. The only problem is we've got to get some um, health back. So Braviary comes in. This thing can hit us pretty hard, like I've said before. Um, I definitely want to go Bronzong here. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. We can use Wish on Sylveon to bring back the Golem in against something like the Iron Fawns. And get all our HP back. That's what I'm like leaning towards. So they go for an Esper Wing once again. It's going to bounce right off us. And uh, this turn, I believe they might go for... Because we're Choice Specs now. So we could go for a very powerful future site if we want to. But I don't think it's going to benefit us much. I think going for a Gyreball is going to benefit us more. So they do withdraw the Braviary. Are they going to go into the Moltres? Probably, right? Moltres comes in. So Moltres is a good switch there. Oh, look at that. I love the way its flames glow in this game. They look really nice. So Moltres comes in. Gyreball doesn't do anything, obviously. Um, but now we get a free switch out in Skeledurge or Cyclozar. I'm leaning towards Cyclozar. Or the Golem. Because they are obviously going to go for a fire type move, right? But I don't know whether Golem can take a flamethrower or a fire blast from this Moltres. But at the same time, I'm not sure I want to on the other Pokemon. So I think Cyclozar is a good switch. Cyclozar can definitely take a fire type move. And we have the Regenerator, so we can just switch out again if we want to. So let's see how this plays out. So Ferrari's going to come back in. Nice and shiny. Got to love it. And uh, they go for a Hurricane instead, which is to definitely take out our Cyclozar. Wait, we lived? Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's go for a Draco just in case they miss. They go for a Flamethrower though, that's going to take us out. So we lost Cyclozar, but they don't really have Hazards on their team. So I'm not too fussed about losing Cyclozar here. As uh, now all we need to do is go into our Inteleon. Um, I, well, I would go Inteleon. Well, they probably go Lapras, right? So is Skeledurge better? No. I think Inteleon is still our only good switch here. So we'll go into James Pond, the uh, Inteleon, like so. And then we'll go straight for a flip. No, the, the Lapras is definitely Water Absorb. So do we go Dark Pulse here? Or do we Snipe Sharp? I feel like we go Dark Pulse, but it's like not doing much to the... I, I feel like we make a double here. So I'm going to go into Golem. I'm going to make a double into Golem. And the Anti-Switchers hate me for doing that. I know they do. But it's fine. Haters going to hate. We're going to go into Golem. They do withdraw and they probably go into Lapras, right? To take the Water Time move. If we can get rid of that Lapras, then we can do a lot of stuff with Intelli on this game. So, Lapras does come in, which is absolutely fine. They can do whatever they want. I am going to go for a Stone Edge right now, as they actually outspeed us. Oh, I didn't think Lapras would outspeed Golem. Lapras must be faster than I thought. They get a crit, which doesn't matter, obviously, because we saw how much Whirlpool did earlier. So, we've lost our pretty much only way of um, defeating this Lapras. <laughs> great. Absolutely great, because they're a Whirlpool... Uh, I'm assuming Perish Trapper. So we have to be extremely careful with what we do next. So I think I'm going to go Skeledurge. Skele Skeledurge should be able to eat up a Whirlpool from this thing because it's not a very powerful move. And we should be able to go straight for a Torch Song and just start firing off Torch Song, basically. Um, I'm looking at Terror Opportunities. I think we should Terror here. Um, let's see. Alluring Voices Base 80. I think we should Terror, but I'm not fully convinced. I think we do Terror and Torch Song. So I'm going to put a massive love heart on my Skeledurge's head like so. And it should help us take the Whirlpool that much better. As there we go, looking amazing with our love heart on our head. Gotta love it. And then we'll just go straight for a Torch Song. So let's see what Skeledurge can do here. So we go for a Torch Song. How much damage is it doing? That's the real question. Not a lot, but we do get the special type boost every time we use it. So it's not a big deal. As there comes the Whirlpool now. No damage, pretty much. As um, you'd expect, since it's a neutral hit and it's a whirlpool from a Lapras. So, what do we do next? Do we just spam Torch Songs? I think we might have to. I think that's probably the way to go, right? Spam Torch Songs. Torch Song comes through. Let's see how much damage it does this time. As it nearly KOs them, which is amazing. Let's see how what they uh, go for. Are they going to go for a Perish Song? They do go for a Perish Song, which is interesting. So, what we can do this next turn is, because I'm assuming they're going to switch out into Salamence or... Moltres. I'm going to go for a plus two Shadow Ball. 
I think Shadow Ball will KO Lapras anyway, so there's no real reason for us not to. And once we get Lapras out of the way, we're no longer trapped by the Whirlpool. And then obviously we can switch out and not worry about the Perish Song. So let us go for a Shadow Ball real quick like so. As uh, they go for a Protect. That's their last move. Protect, Life, Do, Perish Song and Whirlpool. What an absolutely interesting Lapras set. I will say it's a very interesting Lapras set. Um, for sure. So our Perish count is going to fall to two. And we're going to get hit by the Whirlpool real quick. Let's go for a Shadow Ball. They try and go for a Double Protect, which is fair enough. Um, if you can pull that off, you may as well. We go for a Shadow Ball. Takes out the Lapras like so. And then that's one less threat to deal with. So Lapras actually put a lot of pressure on our team. Which is very interesting because it's a Lapras. Iron Fawns is going to come in. So Iron Fawns is a threat, I will say so. It's nice and shiny. I think Iron Fawns shiny looks really cool. Um, do we go for a plus two Shadow Ball right now? I think we do. I think Skeledurge puts a lot of pressure on the team now. Especially with the Terra Fairy. It's definitely putting a lot of uh, pressure on. So they go for a Dragon Dance. I should have gone for an Alluring Voice. That would have been really cool. Alluring Voice, I believe it confuses them if they use a status boosting move on the turn that you use Alluring Voice. So we go for a Shadow Ball. It's Stab. It should do a lot of damage. Oh, 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 oh. that is an unfortunate critical hit right there. As down goes the Iron Fawn. So... Great, Skeledurge is putting a lot of pressure on the team right now, but that's not to say we can still win this. They still haven't Terraged yet, and our Perish can't foul. Oh, wow. They really thought I was going to switch out there. I don't switch out no Perish song. I definitely planned this. Definitely planned this. There's no way I Oh, crap. Uh, what do we do now? So, um, I say we go Inteleon. I'm going to go Inteleon. They go Moltres. We can just go straight for a Snipeshot, but... I feel like they terror the Moltres or go into Salamence um, to take the hit. So I'm going to go for a flip turn first to scout for the terror. So we go for a flip turn. They don't terror. So we could have gone for a snipe shot there. Um, no flame body, which is nice. Let's see what we can bring in against this Moltres now. So I'm leaning towards sacking off Bronzong. But Garibald could come in clutch against that um, Hisuian Braviary. So I'm actually leaning more towards our Sylveon. So I'm going to go Sylveon real quick. Hubba Bubba. They more likely go for a U-turn or a Hurricane. They go for a Hurricane and they miss. Hax is not on their side at the moment, which is amazing. So, what do we do? Do we Calm Mind up? Calm Minding up could be useful. I think I will Calm Mind up. I think that's probably the best thing for me to do. Hurricane comes through. That's going to do a lot of damage to us. Not really. <laughs> it does confuse us, though, which is really frustrating that it got the confusion. But again, I've got some hacks against them, so it's about time i got some hacks against me. So we get confused. We go for a Calm Mind. We break through Confusion, which is great. And now we start setting up against this Moltres. They pretty much have to be Terra Steel Salamance to win at this point. So I'm going to go for a Hyper Voice because I feel like they don't have Roost. As they go for another Hurricane, which does no damage. Let's see if we can break through Confusion and get a Hyper Voice off. Again, there's no point in me going for loads of Calm Minds because they're probably just going to go for the Salamance. Um, Terra Steel and all that stuff. So now I'm thinking, what do we do here? Because this hurricane spam is really hurting us. Let's go for another hyper voice. I don't see any reason not to. They hit in every hurricane as well, which is great. Like great that the hacks is not in their is, is in their favor in that regard. So hyper voice comes through. One more hyper voice should do it, but I'm thinking one more hurricane will do us. So let's see how this plays out. They hit another hurricane. Wow. They've got some really good spectacles on right there. So we go for hyper voice, take out the Moltres. They unfortunately lost out on KOing us with the Moltres by 5 HP, which is really unfortunate for them. Braviary comes in. So this thing's going to Esco Wing us to take us out, which makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go for the Hyper Voice anyway, because there was always a chance they would set up Calm Mind or something. I don't know what set they are, but they're going to get a speed boost, which is very unfortunate for us. So knowing that, it's all going to come down to this. Bronzong needs to be able to KO this thing with Garibald. That is for sure. And I'm pretty confident it will KO because of the speed boost that he got. But I'm not 100% confident that he got, um, you know. So they go for a Hurricane, which misses. They finally miss a Hurricane. We go for a Gyro Ball. Let's see how much damage it does. Oh, it's a clean critical hit KO. That Braviary goes straight down. There's a lot of crits this game, I must say. There's a lot of crits, but a lot of Hurricanes hitting that shouldn't hit. <laughs> so anyway, Salamence is going to come in. So it's nice and shiny. Got to love it. Look at that beauty. They go for an Intimidate, which is going to lower our Garibald attack. They probably go for a Dragon Dance here. But I'm going to stick in and go for a Garibald once again. They go ahead and Terra. Are they Terra Steel or Poison? I'm hoping for Poison. 
I'm hoping for poison or fire. The Terra Steel. So that is unfortunate. They go for the Terra Steel. They may win this with the Salamence with the Dragon Dance because I can't really switch my Intelli on in because I don't know what they're going to do. But they do go for a Dragon Dance. And now they outspeed everything on my team, which is really unfortunate. But let's see how much this Gyro Ball does first. Um, now that they've got a boost of speed stat, it still does a respectable amount. And the more they Dragon Dance, the more power it's going to have. So let's see how this plays out. They go for an Outrage. They must not have a coverage move to hit Bronze on, which is fair enough. We go for a Gyro Ball. Again, no damage. But they may get confused after this Outrage, which could decide the match. Could decide the match big time. So let's see how this plays out. So Rainmaker goes down. Are they going to get confused this turn? Let's see. No, it looks like they haven't. So we'll go into Inteleon. James Pond. I really wish I kept Skeledurge around. I should have let it go down. I, I will be honest. I forgot. I completely forgot about the the uh, the um, Perish song. Let's go for a snipe shot and hope for the best. They go for an outrage. There's no way Inteleon's living that. And that is going to be the second, well, the game. I was going to say the second game. That's going to be the game. So GG Gwen, that was a really fun one. It came right down to the wire. Great job with the Salamance at the end there. You really pulled that off. And it's great to see Salamance putting in work because I do love Salamance. And the second battle is here. We're going against Sunny Fresh from the Discord server in the underused tier. They've got a very threatening team. They've got the rain team with the Politoed and the Overquill. Ursa Ursaring's pretty cool to see. Uh, Arbok, Arcanine Hisui, and a Heracross. So pretty powerful stuff. I do enjoy this uh, this team quite a bit. So we can take advantage of the rain a little bit. The, the rain will boost our power from our Inteleon. Um, Skeledurge looks like it's not going to be very useful here. Arcanine takes it out. I think Heracross is the only Pokemon it really stands a chance against. And Ursa Ring. And Arbok. But we don't talk about Arbok because Arbok can take advantage if we Terra. So I think if they lead with Politoed, we should lead with something to counteract that. And I'm actually leaning towards Golem. I want to get those Stealth Rocks up, that's for sure, because they don't have a Hazard Clearer. So I really want to get them Stealth Rocks up, and then we can go for a Custat Berry Explosion, hopefully. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Sunny Fresh. So they're going to lead off with Ursa Ring, nice and shiny. We lead off with Rocky Row, the Golem. So this is not a bad matchup for us. We can go straight for a Stealth Rocks real quick, which is exactly what I'm going to do as they go for a Bulk Up. So that is now terrifying me. Ursa Ring with the Violite is extremely bulky. It's got really good HP stat as well to boot. So we've got to be very careful with what we do here. So I kind of want to go for an EQ just to test how much damage it does. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. They go for a Hammer Arm, which is going to sting. Absolutely going to sting. But it does lower their speed, which is great. We go for an EQ. And let's see how much damage this does. Not even... About a quarter. Great. So... If we assume, we, I think we should just go for the explosion. No, 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 no. The Custard Berry could come in, come in handy, really, really could. So I think if they're going to go for a Hammer Arm again, which is more than likely, they're not Facade, then we should go into Bronzong or we should go into Sylveon. I'm leaning towards Sylveon. Getting that Rocky Helmet chip is going to be really useful, but we can now, now that the Golem is in um, Custard Berry range, we can now use that later against something that's faster or something that's in the rain, for example, an Overquill. So, Hammer Arm comes through, it does no damage. We get some Rocky Helmet Chip as well, which is absolutely amazing. And then all we're going to do is start firing Hyper Voices at this Ursa Ring because it's obviously going to attack us all out. And we do outspeed because of the Hammer, hammer Arm, which is great. They go for an Avalanche, which is going to still oh, get a crit. Not sure if the crit mattered, but they get Rocky Helmet still at least as now we're able to come in and finish this Ursa Ring off with pretty much everything. It is a shame to lose that so early on, but it's fine. I think the best thing for me to do here is go into Cyclozar. Cyclozar can fire off a Draco Meteor at pretty much everything on the team, and we can even knock things off. Nice and shiny as well, gonna love it. Um, let's go for a knockoff. There's no point dropping a Draco just yet. We may as well just knock that thing to Evilite off and get the KO. As down goes Ursa Ring, so that's great. It's a big throw out of the way. It did punch some holes on our team. It's took out the Sylveon, and it's put our Golem in Custard Berry range, which actually benefits us more. Arbok comes in. So what's Arbok planning to do here? If I had to guess, I'd say it's a Scale Shot set. Um, but we get some Stealth Rocks, which is great. They go for an Intimidate, lower our attack. Um, do I drop a Draco here, or do I U-turn? I feel like they go for a Scale Shot, so I haven't got a Sylveon to switch in. But I do have a Bronzong, so I'm going to go for a U-turn. Get on out of there real quick. 
And um, Bronzong is pretty much our best Pokemon to deal with this Arbok. Because not only does it take scale shots like a champ, it's also immune to its poison stab. So we'll go Bronzong real quick, like so. And the great thing is, we can just go for a Garibald because this thing, if it goes for a scale shot, it's going to boost its speed but lower its defense. As there goes the scale shot, it's going to bounce right off us. And they're probably loaded dice if I had to guess. So this is probably going to hit four to five times. It hits three. There's the fourth. Are we going to get a, a fifth? Yeah, we get a fifth, which is awesome. So hits five times. But like I said, it lowers its defense and boosts its speed, which is going to put Garibald's power to a new level. So I'm going to go for a Garibald real quick. I don't see any reason not to. So they withdraw their Arbok. They know what's coming. They knew it was coming. Are they going to go Arcanine or Politoed? Politoed comes in. I really like Politoed. Um, nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. Um, so we get some stones digging into it. It's going to get the rain up like so. And it's more than likely damp rock. So we go for a Gyrable, which is great and all. Um, and what we have to do is we have to go for a light screen now. So I am going to go for a light screen. They go for an earth power, but we are unfortunately for them levitate, not heat proof. So that didn't work out very well for them. We get a light screen up, which is amazing. And then obviously we have to get our Reflect up for that Overquill. To be fair, looking at their team, I think Reflect is way more important. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. They do withdraw the Politoed. What are they going to go into though? Is it the Overquill Freezer? Is that the Overquill? It is. Nice and shiny. I like the Freezer name because it's very much got Freezer colors, to be fair. So we go for a Reflect, which is going to do Diddly Squat. And they are definitely Swift Swim. I can't afford to switch anything into this Overquill. I need a free switching with my Golem. So I'm going to go for a Gyrable first. They go for a Swords Dance. Again, we've got Custat Berry on the Golem. So I'm not too worried about this thing. Free damage with the Gyrable is amazing. As it does over half, which is fantastic. So let's see how this plays out. Because with Reflect, we could still take a Crunch from this thing. As uh, they go for a Liquidation in the rain. Fair enough. And no way near enough damage. As Bronzon comes through with a Gyrable. And takes that Overquill out. They were not expecting Bronzong to tank that like it did. They definitely weren't expecting that. To be fair, Liquidation in the Rain, I thought it'd do more. But anyway, the Politoed's Rain is going to wear off, which tells me it wasn't Damp Rock, which is fair enough. But I think their best play now is to go into the Arcanine. Yep, yeah, there's the Arcanine. So Arcanine is going to be able to fire off a Flare Blitz at us. And I guess in this instance, it's actually a good thing that the Rain wore off because now their Flare Blitz isn't going to be hindered by it. So let's go for a Future Sight first, just in case we live, because that Future Sight will hurt. But no, we don't live a Flare Blitz from the Arcanine. It's got to be Banded, right? It's got to be Banded, I'd say. So what do we do here? Because if we go Golem, they're going to predict that. They're definitely going to predict that and go the Heracross. And I don't want that. I really don't want that. Um, if we assume they're locked in, we could go Skeledurge. I think I think we will try the go the um, the uh, the golem because here's the thing: they they might they might be choice scarf for all we know. That flare blitz, I think it takes you out unboosted. So I'm gonna go for an earthquake right now. Hopefully they stay in because that'd be amazing. As there we go, they do stay in. We get the custard berry explosion off, which is absolutely fantastic. Not the explosion. They do and they don't stay in. Oh, the item activates after the... Okay, fair enough. So Politoed comes in. Politoed, how well are you taking this? You're going to get the rain up again, which isn't going to benefit the Arcanine in any way whatsoever. Drizzle comes through. We go for an EQ, and that is obviously going to do a lot of damage to the Politoed. Actually nearly takes it out, which is crazy. Let's go for an explosion just because why not? They go for a weather ball, though. That's going to take us out, so... I say go for the explosion. Obviously, I knew we weren't going to pull the explosion off. But I'm looking at their team now. And in the rain, I think we got this with Inteleon. I really think we got this with Inteleon. So let's try it out. James Pond comes in. Looking like an absolute champ. Ready to fire off some snipe shots. Let's go for the snipe shot. There's no real reason not to. As there we go. Poof. Down goes the Politoed. So I'm wondering what terror they are. Because they didn't terror the Ursa Ring. They didn't terror the uh, Arbok. They didn't terror the... Um, Overquill either. I'm wondering what they are. Heracross comes in. So is Heracross going to terror on us? That's the real question. It's nice and shiny and golden. Gotta love it. Um, what do we do here? So I could switch on Skeledurge. I think I think Skeledurge is the way to go here because we don't know what Heracross this is. It could be Choice Scarf with Moxie. Don't really want to have to deal with that. So let's go Skeletor like so. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. They go for a Bulk Up, which is... A pretty good play, but we are unaware, so I'm not too bothered about the bulk up too much. The team's reflect does wear off, as we now go for a torch song. 
just to get some damage off on this Heracross. Again, we're not bothered about the bulk up at all. And they're going to go ahead and withdraw. So they don't want to stay in against the Skeledurge. They're going to go into Arbok, of all things, which is an interesting one. Torch Tongue's not going to do too much damage because of the rain, but we should be all right as they do get an Intimidate off, which doesn't matter against Skeledurge. Um, so we go for a Torch Tongue, and it still does a respectable amount of damage. I mean, it's an Arbok after all. I think Skeledurge can handle this, though. The rain is going to stop. We go for a Torch Tongue once again. Should definitely take out the Arbok as they go for a Scale Shot just to get as much damage off as possible on the Skeledurge. Makes a lot of sense. But I'm pretty sure we still have Terror, right? So we can just Terror Fairy on that Arcanine's head smash that's coming through. So they hit us four times. That's great. Lowers the defenses. Boosts the speed, which is always nice. We go for a Torch Song. No more rain. Plus one special attack. Can't go wrong. Arbok goes down. So there we go. So with Arbok out of the way, we just have to go ahead and hope they don't... Well, not hope. They're going to go into the Arcanine. And they're going to head smash, pretty much, is what I'm trying to say. And we don't know what set they are, whether the Choice Scarf or Choice Banded. It's up in the air. It could be anything, really. So Arcanine comes in. We definitely want to keep our Skeledurge around. If it's Banded, Head Smash will KO us from here, even if we Terra. So I'm going to sack Cyclizar off first and foremost. That way we get a free switch in with the Inteleon. If Head Smash doesn't KO Cyclizar, we know it's Choice Scarfed. If it does, there's a good chance it's banded. They go for a wild charge expecting... Ooh, Inteleon's coming, maybe. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to knock that thing off. I'm going to knock it off. I'm going to get rid of that choice band or whatever it's got. Muscle band. Yeah, it's like a choice band. They go for a close combat. Takes out Cyclozar, which is absolutely fantastic for them. As now, I'm leaning towards the Inteleon switch. They can just go for an extreme speed. Which will definitely take us out. But I'm wondering if they have extreme speed. Because they have wild charge, flare blitz it, and close combat. Do they not have head smash? They might not, to be fair. Because it has got a high chance of missing. But I'm going to bring Inteleon in right now. James Pond comes in. 007 back at it. And uh, we go for a snipe shot. There were no reason not to go for a snipe shot. Which is great. So they withdraw the Arcanine. I wonder why. I'd have just let it go down. Get Heracross this free switch in. I think Heracross needs a free switch in really. But anyway, in comes Heracross. Nice and shiny. Point Stone's going to dig in. We go for a Choice Specs Booster Snipe Shot. Should definitely do a lot of damage. Nearly KOs. We go for another Snipe Shot now. There we go. Not letting no Heracross get over us. So down it goes. And then Arcanine comes in. And I think Arcanine just goes down to a Snipe Shot, right? Unless uh, we uh, haven't seen a Terra yet. No, we haven't seen a Terra yet, have we? Did we see a Terra? I don't think we did. I don't think we did. As the Arcanine is going to go down to the Stealth Rocks anyway. So, GG. That was a pretty fun one. Sunny Fresh. Um, really fun one. Uh, Inteleon kind of popped off a little bit. Not too much. Got to decide what we're going to do for the thumbnail first. <laughs> I'll analyze and make one to suit. So, that's fair enough. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Let me know if you use it and let me know how it goes. Because I'm always intrigued to see how people use my teams. It's always pretty interesting to find out. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.